Hi, it's Chloe here, host of the show, and I'm butting in before every single episode to tell you to get your free ticket to our brand new virtual event right now. This time we're tackling the problem of overstocks, both how to avoid them and how to clear them. So it's perfect for you if you've got stock in your warehouse you desperately need to turn back into cash, you want to clear your stock without filling all your marketing space with discount messages, you want to leverage your stock to improve your profits, cash flow and environmental impact. Just use our short link keepopt.com forward slash summit to get your free ticket. And to answer the number one most asked question, will replays be available? Why, yes, replays will be available to everyone who has signed up. So sign up and then you can watch at your convenience. Just use our short link, keepopt.com forward slash summit to get your free ticket now. So hit pause, sign up and then come back and hit play to hit the rest of the episode you actually wanted to listen to. Take the data and the feedback that I'm getting from my best customers and implementing that in my email marketing and everything else you do. You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this Marketing Focus Podcast. If you're not familiar with our format, well, each month we focus on a different marketing method like email or SEO or Facebook ads. And each week I interview a different marketing method expert to explore it for you. Now, I've been trying to get someone from Drip, the email marketing platform, I suppose, on for a very long time. And it's finally happened. And not only has it happened, but my guest is bringing on a really interesting argument for improving your email marketing this year. He's making the case for stopping doing your weekly newsletters. Da, da, da. Yes, uh, we're, going, we're going controversial in this episode. And he's also bringing some brilliant tips and advice as well. And in fact, I would say the the overall theory of this episode, the overall message from this episode is a little bit like like what we were talking about with Gabe Macaluso from Omnisend earlier this month about lazy email marketing or being a bit more relaxed with your email marketing, taking the pressure off yourselves a little. If that hasn't got you intrigued as to what's coming up, I don't know what else will. So consider yourself hooked and make sure you listen right to the end because as I said, my guest is sharing some brilliant tips and an amazing free an amazing freebie in um, the quick fire insider tips round. So stick around to the end. And after that, I'll be giving you my take on all of this and outlining a couple of other ways we can help you too. So stay tuned to the end. Today's episode is brought to you by Omnisend. Omnisend is an email and SMS marketing platform built for online merchants like you who want to increase their sales, not their workloads. With Omnisend, you'll be launching pre-built e-commerce automations in no time, as well as intuitively segmenting customers based on their shopping behavior and even trying out SMS or push notifications all from the same platform. More than 80,000 e-commerce brands use Omnisend to drive sales and build better customer relationships, converting their customers with quick-to-create, highly relevant emails and texts. The best part? You can get 30% off Omnisend for your first three months right now, but only when you visit keepopt.com forward slash Omnisend, with Omnisend spelt O-M-N-I-S-E-N-D. Go to keepopt.com forward slash Omnisend now to save. It's finally live, Chloe's e-commerce club. Yes, my new free online club where the whole Keep Optimizing audience and our experts can come together. The point of the club is to help you all improve your e-commerce businesses and to help you solve your marketing challenges, learn more tactics and much more. We are starting simple and focusing on that core aim of helping us all get through this challenging year in the best way possible. But we've got lots lined up for the coming months and I'm sure we'll add more things into the club based on your needs and feedback. It really is a club all about you and supporting your business. And yes, I will personally be there hanging out and helping you Monday to Friday. So how can you join me in the club? Well, just go to keepopt.com forward slash club. It's totally free to join. So come and join me and hundreds of our listeners at keepopt.com forward slash club.
Today, I'm chatting with email marketing expert, Emil Christensen. Emil is CMO at e-commerce CRM system, Drip, and before that was CMO and co-founder at Sleeknote. So he's been helping us all to improve our email marketing for a decade now. Um, hello, Emil. Hello, and thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. I'm looking forward to finding out your latest advice on email marketing. But before we get into that, Emil, how did you all those years ago, get into the world of email. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure I could bore most people to death here. So I'll, I'll keep it very short and simple. You know, I've been playing around in the e-com space 15 years ago or so uh, for a long time. And then I joined an e-com agency. After that, kind of did a little bit of consulting, uh, joined another e-com business. So I've been sitting as a CMO and e-com business as well. And then I started Sleeknote, which is a SaaS company. We got acquired by Drip recently last year. And that's kind of the story here. Uh, and email marketing has always been the backbone of all of it. Even back from the e-com days, like email marketing was kind of the biggest growth opportunity at the time. And I still see that today. Obviously now I'm much more colored than I was 10, 15 years ago but I still see there's so much value in email marketing. So you're in that great position where you, you understand where our listeners are coming from because you've done their job, but you're also now in this position where you're deep and have been for many years now in this one marketing method and getting to see how hundreds of thousands of brands are using it around the world and, and working out what's happening, which is a brilliant space to be in. So it's absolutely brilliant to have you here. But you've you've suggested the topic, or you've given me the topic for this interview of that it's time to stop sending our weekly newsletters, which I figure half the audience will be going, oh, that's controversial. And the other half will be going, really, I could stop sending them. That's brilliant. So, um, Emil, why should we be considering stopping sending our newsletters? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm not trying to cheat anyone here, but of course the headline is also to get you to listen to this. But I think the the main objective with this is I think the error of us thinking about weekly newsletters where we start creating a newsletter Monday and we send it out Thursday at 9 a.m. And we don't really think much about it. We just blast it out to everyone that's on our list. And we don't have any segments. We don't have anything that's relevant to where they are in their customer journey. Those days are gone. If you want to have success with email marketing, not just now, but also two, three, five years from now, I think you have to not just do segmentation as everyone would recommend, but think about it as it's campaigns instead. And I can give you a specific example here. So I can give you an example from our own everyday life here at Trip. So we could do the easy way out here and just say, we want to send an email every Thursday at 9 a.m. And we want to send that to everyone that's on our email list. And we have a weekly, let's just take one of the boring ones, webinars. We want to promote that uh, every Thursday. That's the classic B2B way of doing it. And I'm like, I'll relate this back to e-com in a second, but I'm just going to take this from my own kind of use case. What we do instead is we have five different, four, four different segments now, uh, but five over time. That's the next one we're going to add to it, but four different segments right now. We have customers, we have partners, we have new sign up, and we have someone that has a high interest, but is not a customer yet. That's for super simple audiences. So e-com, the classic and the simple version here is just everyone that bought from you and someone that didn't buy from you yet. Just start there. Just let's not overdo it. And I think that's the case that most people will start doing is they'll overcomplicate this with having 20 different audiences and then they'll stop there because then they have all of the 20 different audiences and they try to solve it with automations which at the end of the day, you don't solve it with automation, you solve it with targeting and then your messaging afterwards. So for us, it is, we send out not a weekly newsletter, but we send out something when we have something relevant for these audiences and it's hyper specific for those audiences. So the best example is of course, customers. Should we send a pitch about drip to our customers? No, obviously not, but a lot of B2B companies are. And e-com examples, customers, if you're going into a physical store, that's the example I always skip. It's like, if you go into a physical store right now, 
in one of the shopping streets close to you and you go into a store where you've been 10 times and you've been shopping there you know three times over the last two or three months they know you maybe some of them remember what you bought as well so the experience there and the way that they communicate to you are completely different from if you're just stepping into that store the first time and you should treat email the same so you should treat not just your automations because most people will see this as oh okay so that's my automations you're talking about no i'm not talking about your automations here i'm just talking about the way that we think about what i call weekly newsletters remove those put it into segments instead and then think about what are the different things what are the pain points each of these audiences have and let me break them down for you slowly not just until they become a customer but also for them to buy again and make sure they're happy get feedback so it's not a monologue i think most people treat email as a monologue here's a lot of there's a lot of small things here in between this but that's kind of some of the overall frames of it it's like if you treat email as a monologue <laughs> where you're talking to them and you don't have a holistic view of all of your channels so you're in email you're saying here's a discount code to 10 percent they just bought some from something from you so they're a customer 15 minutes later you send out sorry my language but you bad shitty email that goes out every thursday with a discount code of 20 percent, and they just bought from you 15 minutes ago and you know five hours later they get a facebook ad with something that's completely unrelevant unre to they just bought from they, you sell your fashion and they just bought something from the female section and you're showing them something completely different try not to be a monologue but have a dialogue instead and treat different audiences different with your messaging and i think that's kind of a good starting point what i really like about the things you've just taken us through there emil is how for an email marketer we're kind of giving them the permission to do a little bit less but more more intelligently so rather than it being this production line of oh god like you were saying it's monday we've got to come up with something to send them all on thursday and just this boring churn of content that just gets blasted to everyone we're going right this week we need to shift some fairies some garden ornaments who are we going to send it to well we know new customers love our garden ornaments so let's send it to our inquirer list those who haven't bought it, and, and we're not going to annoy our existing customers with it who've been buying fairies throughout the whole of the spring it's it's a kind of like a permission to do less and a and it kind of takes away some of the intensity of it somehow doesn't it as a, as a way of thinking about these things yeah, and I think the sentence that I'm going to say so many times and I'm saying to my own team every single week is like, you have to start looking from the customer's perspective, not your own. So it's not always about what you want to sell, but what the customer wants. And I think that's where email oftentimes is misleading for people as well. It's like they think, well, I got to sell X, Y, and Z, so that's what I'm going to send to my customers, right? Where it should be the other way around. My customers just bought these things here from me six months ago. Now, what what do I know from my data that they need now? How can I help them? Not necessarily what they're asking for, because then you go into the old quote of our customers don't know what they're asking for yet, da 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 da. But at the end of the day, you should have that combination between your data and what the customers are saying. Building on that with your point earlier about uh, focusing in on the pain points of those individual segments was absolutely spot on for this, especially when you're talking about, you know, the group who've never bought from you. You should know enough about what's stopping them. Is it your delivery, your returns policy? Is it because they don't know what to buy? Is it because they're not sure how the product works? And there's just so many really straightforward things you can sell to, not sell to them, send to them to break down those barriers that that may well become you know one that you send every few months out to them but but with a little tweak and a little update yeah and i have I actually have some good advice because that's that's where <laughs> i think that's where you should start you should start with your customers like a lot of companies they start with those that's not a customer yet for me i see it as a bullseye and this is a framework that we're building on right now for trip it's not a promotion for trip by no means this is a very simple marketing framework where you start with the bullseye you start with the customer that's kind of the inner circle so you want to know why are they your best customer and how did they become your best customer and how do you get more of them like those are the three simple questions that you should be able to reply to no matter if you're b2b e-com no matter what you're selling those are three 
very generic questions you should know. When you know those, well, you can start replying to those questions for those that's not a customer yet. And you can do that through email and you can do it through multiple channels. But at the end of the day, it's just a matter of figuring out who is my best customers and how do I get more of them and how do I take the data and the feedback that I'm getting from my best customers and implementing that in my email marketing and everything else you do. It is kind of crazy how many brands aren't asking those questions of their best customers, of their customers full stop, because one of the best things you can do to make your customers love you more is to ask them their opinion. So it's like you kind of, you win on every front. You know what messages to send them, you know what messages to send your wannabe customers, and you're making them feel like they're more connected to you at the same time. It, it's such a such a no-brainer process. Yeah, so I, can, I think to summarize some of this is like stop sending weekly newsletters. It's like, for me, it's just, you know, the error of us just sending out this shitty newsletter every first day that we start working on Monday morning because we realize that we have to sell some products by the end of the week that's, I don't know, it's on its way out and we have to sell them. Not our customers don't want them, but we have to sell them. Turn that around, <laughs> please. So it's all about the customers and what do they actually want. And then you'll see over time when you reply to those three simple questions of like, who is your best customers? Why are your best customers? How do they become your best customers? And how do I get more of them? Over time, you'll create your segments. Start super simple. Like, don't have 20 segments. Just have two. Just have those as your customers, those that didn't buy from you yet. Very simple. Over time, you, you make it much more complicated of people that's more loyal to you, loyalist, and yada, yada, yada. A lot of email systems, they create these system automations and segments for you automatically. Yes, we do that. But at the end of the day, I think you should just focus on two of them in the beginning. And over time, you start to focus on more and more and more. And now the next question is, but I don't have time to this. I don't have the resources to write an email to my different audiences every week. My counter argument would be, you can't afford not to have time to write to your customers and those that didn't buy from you in a different messaging. It's like, again, if I come back to the physical store and if I talk to someone like they've been here before, or if I talk to someone that been to the store literally yesterday and bought something and I'm just saying, hey, hey Chloe, uh, here's a 15% discount code. I haven't seen you before. Uh, it's like, <laughs> you know, the communication is, that's, you're not gonna come back. But right? indeed, and, and the other thing with that is if you currently are sending out a weekly newsletter to everybody, just alternate. You know, you've got enough time to do one newsletter a week. So one week, send it to the inquirers, one week, send it to the buyers. You know, when you start this and you start working out the pain points, you're going to have a whole load of stuff you want to send them. So if you're alternating it, you'll start to see how each is responding, start to see what the frequency needs to be for each group and so forth. So actually, I think that that's one of the things I really like about this strategy you're giving us here, Emil, is that it can increase our short term and our long term performance without taking any more marketing time. And actually we're making our marketing job more fun and interesting. Uh, from you know if you if you take in that right i now have permission to create really interesting emails for the right customer group and i have don't have to create one you know six emails every week i can just create the one that most needs creating yeah and the next step here and we shouldn't go too deep because probably because of time <laughs> i know but we could go super deep yeah so the next step what you do is some of these emails is going to perform better than others and here's your automations you, you're you answering pain points. You're answering the things they want to know when they sign up. So here's your welcome flow. Okay, card abandonment. Okay, maybe there's some pain points, some obligated kind of emails that you feel like you have to start writing. Well, start doing that in your campaigns and then you can slowly put it all together and have your automations instead of starting the other way around. Well, exactly. It's like, it, it amazes me how many brands come up with like an amazing sequence between email sign up to try and get someone to, to purchase. And they, you know, emails that explain the brand and explain the categories and they never get used again. And you're like, oh, we've, we've got loads of people who inquired a year ago who've never bought. What should we send them? Let's start with something brand new. It's like, no, let's let's reuse our our initial onboarding sequence there and the number of brands who are going yeah we really must create some post-purchase emails at the moment you know the, that that period and yet they're not going what newsletters have worked really well <laughs> it's, it's there's so much opportunity for clever use of manpower 
within this, especially when you're putting the time into the research. It's kind of mind boggling people aren't doing it already. I think the last thing I want to say here with this is like, don't spend too much time on design and analytics in general. And this is going to be controversial as well, at least the last part of it. I see companies doing this every single week, every day, spending almost weeks designing templates. And then what you do, what our sales team does right now, and I find this very interesting and funny at the same time, they remove the logo and the colors and you can't see the difference between your email design and your six other competitors that's sending out the same email first day morning at 9 a.m. So why are you spending this much time on design and fancy analytics where most of the analytics at the end of the day, yes, and I'm saying this as an email system, is broken anyway. You've got to get focused on what actually matters, which is the message, not you know, whether you're going three images across or two images across or, or all the rest of it. Brand colors, brand logo, get the messaging right. Oh, I love it. Emma, you've given us some really, some really good kind of freeing yet a little bit controversial points of view on email. Anyone who's trying this out, and FYI, you should be trying this out. Please do let us know. It's been great picking your brains about all of this, Emil. Listeners, stay tuned right to the end because Emil's going to be sharing his insider tips on email marketing very shortly. And then I'll be giving you my suggestions for more free resources to help you improve things even further in your business. Today's episode is brought to you by Omnisend. Omnisend is an email and SMS marketing platform built for online merchants like you who want to increase their sales, not their workloads. With Omnisend, you'll be launching pre-built e-commerce automations in no time, as well as intuitively segmenting customers based on their shopping behavior and even trying out SMS or push notifications all from the same platform. More than 80,000 e-commerce brands use Omnisend to drive sales and build better customer relationships, converting their customers with quick-to-create, highly relevant emails and texts. The best part? You can get 30% off Omnisend for your first three months right now, but only when you visit keepopt.com forward slash Omnisend, with Omnisend spelt O-M-N-I-S-E-N-D. Go to keepopt.com forward slash Omnisend now to save. It's finally live, Chloe's e-commerce club. Yes, my new free online club where the whole Keep Optimising audience and our experts can come together. The point of the club is to help you all improve your e-commerce businesses and to help you solve your marketing challenges, learn more tactics and much more. We are starting simple and focusing on that core aim of helping us all get through this challenging year in the best way possible. But we've got lots lined up for the coming months and I'm sure we'll add more things into the club based on your needs and feedback. It really is a club all about you and supporting your business. And yes, I will personally be there hanging out and helping you Monday to Friday. So how can you join me in the club? Well, just go to keepopt.com forward slash club. It's totally free to join. So come and join me and hundreds of our listeners at keepopt.com forward slash club. Okay, Emil, so far we've gone deep into why people should change their newsletter habits quite deeply. Uh, Now you get to hour us with your insider knowledge about the whole of email marketing. So for the following questions, your answer can be anything to do with email marketing, which of course includes everything we've already been talking about. So Emil, are you ready for the insider tips? Yep, let's go. Okay, let's start with newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? You know, I'm going to relate it back to what we just talked about. So a lot of folks are struggling with writing their emails and with good reason. Like that's why my last tip here is don't spend too much time on design because that's what people are starting to do because that's the simple and easy and fun thing to do with email marketing, right? So that's where you spend 80% of your time. What you should do instead and messaging and copywriting in general, here's a simple tip that I know works. I've used it myself or like almost every week. I have my own weekly newsletter as well. I don't call it a weekly newsletter, but I have my own newsletter as well. And I've seen this implemented in multiple companies as well, where they've struggled with it. And it's 
so that simple for me it's an iphone but i have like an audio there's an audio recorder on most phones these days take it up and you record yourself what you're going to say to your customer it's going to help you transcribe it and here's your draft so just say it as you would say it to someone from your family a friend or whatever and then adjust the copy of course and there's a few sentences and whatever not that of course you have to remove you have to adjust that copy but it's a starting point it's a draft and you've started kind of like that blank document in google docs or whatever and it's very difficult to start and um, so here's a good and simple start for everyone that's new i would recommend maybe looking up a copywriting framework after that there is a trillion of them i think it's called bab that's the one I use. That is the one I've been using for so many years. It's like before, after bridge. And I think people should just look it up, but it's very simple. You kind of just describe, introduce the problem that your product and services solves. And then the after is describe what life is like after using your product or service. And the bridge is like explain how your products and services make that transition from before to after possible. Simple as that. That's the easy explanation of it. Yeah. Love that. So we got some copywriting structures and that brilliant idea of getting past the blank page, that horrible blank page by using um, the recording device on your phone and getting it transcribed. Loving that. Now, once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve performance? For me, when I look at analytics in general, I've been starting to look a lot for replies instead and engagement, open rate, click through rate and all of the old metrics and analytics. <laughs> you should still look at those. But I think for me, engagement these days with email, also to tie it back to what we talked about today. For me, the highest conversion before a sale is a reply to an email. Like, again, I don't want to have a monologue here. I want to have a dialogue. So how can I get replies without having to almost cheat people to <laughs> give me a reply, but how can I get people so excited about something? Maybe they have a question, I actually invite them to have a question about my product or my service, whatever not. Like it's very uncommon for me to see e-com businesses actually getting reply to email. And I think that's a mistake. Those that I see have a lot of success with email are the ones that invite people to actually reply to the email. That's where you have the highest form of engagement just under a sale, of course, but it is the highest form for engagement. And you also, there's a lot of uh, promotion tabs and whatever not, you'll kind of, you you get out of the promotion tab, which is a good sign as well for all of the email clients and spam or whatever not, like it's a good positive sign. Yeah, and if you've done that research to un identify the pain points and understand what your customers want, then replies show that you're on the money with understanding that and giving them what they want. So, so I love that, really aim for that actual real engagement with your with your content if someone listening wants to learn more is there one cheap or free resource you would recommend you know what i have to do a shameless plug here like we've been spending eight or nine years for <laughs> writing about email marketing on our own blog uh, on drip we moved the entire sleek note blog to drip and we combined it and removed all resources that we are not 100 percent proud of not because we didn't get search traffic but we just wanted the best resource out there for email marketing and i feel like we have that that's a shameless plug, so I'll combine that with write me an email at ek at drip.com and I have a physical book and no strings attached, no nothing. I haven't talked with you, Chloe, about this before, but I, I wanted to give something here as well. And I'll send you that book for free, 100% for free. Uh, we have two physical books. We have one called built to scale for e-com and we have one that's called subscribe and subscribe is about all of the topics that we talked about here and i want to send you that book a physical version and not an ebook <laughs> a real book and i'm gonna send you that that is very generous of you thank you ml and just to be sure that was ek at drip.com for anyone who wants to email you to grab their copy yep very cool thank you very much that's i think possibly the most generous offer we've had um, on the podcast ever. So thank you. Oh, there we go. There we go. There so, we go. you know, when you block something, you have to give something. That's the mantra I'm I like kind of it. following. So. <laughs> Finally, Emil, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for? You know what? I could go super high level here and I could go very tactical. I think I'm going to do something in between. We have a big discussion and drip now 
about customer centric versus channel centric. And this is not a new discussion per se, but it's a discussion that we've been having over the last year or so. And it, I know this is not a new thing in the marketing world either, but here's my perspective and why it's important for you. I think today there is heavily lean towards channel centric. And what I mean about channel centric is there's a silo experience for all of your visitors. I talked a little bit about this already in the podcast here. So you have your Facebook ads, they have one kind of style. You're talking to them in some language. You don't really know where they are in the customer journey. Then you have your email. They talk, they're a little bit different and you talk to them as you know them maybe. And some of them, you know, they're customers, but you still send out your weekly newsletter social, you're doing that differently as well. So kind of a siloed experience across all of the channels. So this channel centric, and then there's a monologue communication going back to that again. I feel like those are the two sub bullets to the channel centric that we have to start thinking about as marketers and go to a customer centric. That's why I've been talking about this so much today, because it's on my mind constantly right now. How do we rebrand drip to being more of a CRM than an ESP, an email service provider and more CRM for e-commerce. So you start with the customer. This is not an ad for drip by no means. This is more of an ad for a marketing approach, changing a marketing approach from a channel specific channel centric to a more customer centric. So going back to what we discussed in the beginning, it's just like, you have to start thinking about what your customers want and not your own perspective first. So start from a holistic experience of across all of the channels. I'm still working on a visual in my head here that I'm kind of trying to formulate into a podcast here for the first time. I'm sorry about that <laughs> for you that's listening to it right now, but I see all of the channels right now, you know, 10 circles above one circle. And that one circle is the customer. And all of those channels, they just have arrows down to the customer, different experiences, and they don't learn from each other. So when something works, they don't necessarily learn to the other channel and they don't communicate with each other. I see that turning upside down. So you have the customer first and from there, the errors go to the channels. You learn from the customer, you learn what they want, you learn what they don't want and you learn how to get more of them. You get the feedback, you take the data from the channels and you have a holistic experience instead. And you have a dialogue communication. So you collect that feedback. I think the most tactical tip here I can, I can give is like surveys. It's going to be a big thing for us at Drip. Like imagine like I've seen this case literally eight years ago where an e-com site, and I've been following this ever since a survey on a checkout, like receipt page. Why did you choose to buy from us versus some of our competitors? That one simple question, they're changing that question constantly. They have tens of thousands of replies now, eight years later, and I've seen it implemented in multiple other businesses later. And that's why we made sleep note at the time. It's one of the reasons like one is to collect emails, but also to collect that real time feedback and real feedback. Like we have so much data available, but at the end of the day, What's most valuable for us is to know why our customers bought from you and why they want to recommend us to one of their friends or colleagues or family members. If we can collect that uh, and what are some of the friction we can remove, what are some of the faults that we can add so we can do more of it. Those are some of the questions that you should start replying to. So my final sentence would be, you have to start looking from a customer perspective, not your own. I could not agree with you more, Emil. I think I, I myself spend quite a lot of time trying to work out what what are going to separate those who did okay this year from those who did really well this year. You know, if we sat back in, if, it, if we imagine we're in January 2024 and we're looking back and going, what was it that made the super successful brand super successful? The two things you just mentioned, which which keep coming to the top of the list for me are customer focused research, understanding, building relationships, all that kind of stuff. And then secondly, the holistic part you were touching on from a channel perspective, but I think cross business as well, you know, no longer being a siloed organization, but we're about to go, go off on a massive marketing 
economic strategy tangent. So before we do that, Emil, we're very nearly at the end of the show. So could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business if they want to get in touch? Yeah, sure. I think the easiest thing is probably to find me on LinkedIn. I'm trying to be more active there with, you know, a few posts a week. If you're interested in email marketing, uh, how it is to be a CMO in a SaaS company and some e-com advice in general, and then go to drip.com. I think if you want to try out something that's a little bit different from all of your, all of our competitors out there that's trying to do the same thing, all of them with email and fancy email designs, we're trying to build a CRM for e-commerce combining all of the channels on everything I talked about here being customer centric. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It has been really interesting chatting to you. I think you've given us all a lot of practical advice, but also an awful lot to think about, which is often the best of the episodes. So um, Emil, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I love that alternative approach to your newsletter style output that Emil was recommending we go through there. So there's essentially three slash four steps to it. First of all, build those segments and just keep it simple. Who's bought, who hasn't? Two segments. Then do some customer research to find out what their pain points are. What's the why behind why they buy from you or why they're thinking about buying from you? And then deal with those pain points in that email marketing. So think customer first as you're working out what to send each time. And then fourthly, don't be afraid of recycling. Reuse what you've put in your post-purchase sequence in your newsletters. Reuse your what you've put in your welcome campaign between the email sign-up and purchase. Reuse that in your newsletters as well. So be kind to yourself. Reuse the work you've already put in place. And I think there was quite a bit of that coming through in this episode, as there has been in some of our other episodes in our email marketing month. So some really good tips there. You can get the links to everything Emil discussed and recommended and his email address if you go to keepoptimizing.com or just put keepopt.com, whatever the number of this episode is, into the URL bar and you'll be redirected straight to the correct page on the website. And that's set up for every single episode. Once you get to the website, you can also add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things I share in our weekly email newsletter to help you improve your business. And on the website, you can also join us or find out how to join us for our monthly Q&A webinar because I've got or I've invited all of our email marketing specialists to join us for a live Q&A session at the end of this month. Come and join us, bring your email and SMS questions and uh, we will do our best to answer them for you. You may get multiple conflicting answers, but you will definitely get answers. And you can sign up for that at keepopt.com forward slash webinar. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. If you've enjoyed it, then do check out episode 101 with Rob Harrison Plasto, where we get deep into how to actually do that customer research to work out what you've got to put in your email. So episode 101, technically it's a Facebook ads episode, but 99% of what Rob talks about is totally relevant to what Emil was talking about today. And that's really going to help you take action on what you've learned in this episode. And if you want to keep binging our email marketing content, then just scroll up your feed wherever you're listening and you'll see all our email marketing episodes or go to keepopt.com forward slash email to find them all on our website. And please do tell your fellow marketers about the show because I want to help as many of you as possible to improve the performance of your e-commerce marketing. So please do spread the word. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z. Hello, Chloe here. I just wanted to tell you something super exciting before we get into this episode. Chloe's e-commerce club is finally live. Yes, my new free online club where the whole Keep Optimizing audience can come together to improve your e-commerce marketing is live. So how can you join me in the club? Well, just go to keepop.com forward slash club. It's totally free to join. So go on, hit pause and come and join me and hundreds of our listeners at keepopt.com forward slash club. And then don't forget to hit play and listen to the rest of the episode. See you in the club.